What's up guys and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Robbie Cassidy and in today's podcast we are going to discuss testing your mindset uh, and actually testing your mindset in a couple of different capacities uh, from normal situations in your environment to testing your mindset in a rehab scenario and I want to talk a small bit about rehab specifically because obviously it's what I deal with all the time but there are certain mindsets I see that often crop up and certain thought patterns that, that crop up with people who have been injured or keep re-injuring them th- themselves um, and I think it'd be interesting to delve into it a small bit uh, so you may get a better understanding of it if it's you yourself have got caught in this it could be an interesting one because you have a better idea of what to do with it I want to talk about as I said some of the thought patterns I've noticed uh, why are they an issue as well as what solutions could you look at or what could you try to try and improve on them okay um so to jump right into the podcast i think it's best to start off with what thought patterns have i noticed with people who have long-term injuries injuries that are recurring flare-ups consistent flare-ups stuff that's keeping them out of getting back to activity or out of sport um and it's actually something that i see a lot even dealing with with other sports people because i have i guess kind of two populations people who are trying to avoid injury uh, and trying to go through whole seasons without getting injuries Um, and then i have people who are coming back from long-term injuries and there's similar mindsets that you see sometimes and i think addressing them early in the program is really really important because then we can i guess analyze them be more aware of them as they crop up along and be more aware of how they're affecting the person specifically so I think the first one is that, especially with people who have an injury, is that they feel that their body is broken. Okay, they feel that they keep getting these recurring injuries, these recurring flare-ups, because, as I said, their body is broken. It's not fixable. It's it's something that's done. Uh, it's you're fixed and that's it. Okay, you'll often hear them saying that they've tried out everything and nothing has worked, and even though in a lot of situations when you jump into it on these people and you discuss it and you really figure out what they've actually tried out um a lot of the time it's most of them have uh, have i guess exhausted the same routines over and over again and from that they've become exhausted of them so what you'll often see is people doing things like massage getting adjustments um so like to go to a chiropractor or physio get their back cracked and their neck cracked uh, you'll often see that they may be relying on something like foam rolling or they could be just sitting out uh, and resting it for a couple of weeks at a time and actually not stimulating it at all and then hoping to get straight back into training. Uh, so a lot of the time when they fall into this mindset of they tried everything and it doesn't work, they have tried some things uh, and a lot of the time these things then weren't, even if it, it could be their fault of the physio that they were with it could be their own fault but they didn't uh, get them to the outcome that they would have liked and then and i can see how that it would develop because if you've tried things with different physios but every one of them are giving you the same thing i can see how you would fall on that okay right nothing is working for this when really you may have to look back and take a different type of approach to it and i think it does attest to the fact that a lot of people look then towards let's say more alternative medicines uh, and i I do also really like these, but they could look at like Reiki, they could look at maybe acupuncture. I don't know if they're counting that as an alternative anymore. There's a lot of research coming up showing that it actually is a lot more effective than what they recently or they would have previously taught. Uh, but acupuncture, um, it could be like reflexology, uh, and they could be doing different healing forms. But I have no problem with that. I think they definitely should be tried out. I think everyone should figure out what works best for them but if you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're expecting a different result um i heard recently that's actually not the definition of insanity uh there's a different one but um in general that's your like i don't know what else you would expect if you are doing it and see the thing is it might not be your fault specifically because the physios that you go to just run you through the same old patterns over and over again so it can get it's it comes from both sides there definitely the other one I often hear is that they heard a consultant tell them that they have the back of an 80 year old, their knees are degenerating, uh, they have degenerative disc disease, they'll need sur- surgery after a certain 
amount of years to fix it. They'll need a hip replacement after a certain amount of years. And they really, really, really connect to that, like massively. So much so that they will, in certain situations, people will stop actually exercising and stop looking for an alternative to improve it because it's a it's indefinite what's going to happen to them, okay? But so they're doomed to it. And I think that's another one that really needs to be focused on and needs to be improved because uh, having that mindset of, and I guess it comes back to this, this idea of a fixed mindset on the issue that they're struggling with cannot be improved. Uh, and as I said, if it's something that's going to keep happening over and over again, I can. it's understandable that that would develop. Uh, and if it does develop, I guess you need to be aware of it. And that's kind of why I want to put out this podcast is that you may not even be aware that this is a mindset you've taken on or a thought pattern that you've taken on, but it's just crept in over time. Uh, and I'm hoping now that people listening to this will get an idea that, okay, there is other ways you can do it. And they'll notice that maybe in the, uh, in some situations that they're their own biggest obstacle. Their mind is their own biggest obstacle of what they have to overcome. So getting an idea of those, looking at those and getting a better understanding of how you can improve them is, is kind of what I want to talk through in this one. Now, other ones that you often see is that people will identify as, like you often you'll see they'll identify as they have chronic pain or a chronic pain uh, patient. And this is one, it's, a, it's an interesting one because it's difficult to target at times. And I have had a lot of people who have identified that as this, but it's going to be extremely difficult to get over this. And it's going to be extremely difficult to really improve on it if you're identifying as something that's going to be there long term, which or whether, okay, uh, it, it is really, really difficult if that is the mindset. And I, I guess it comes back to sometimes the people, and I often hear it, is that nobody understands them. Nobody understands what's going on. Nobody ever listens to them. They, they don't understand the pain that they're going through. Um, and the thing is, like, it, it's going to be different for everyone. The pain experience is so different for every, from for everybody that uh, it, like in general to try to understand someone's pain completely is difficult but you can get an understanding of what may be going on what could be bothering them and then you can also get an understanding of how you can improve them how you can fix it okay but if you identify and if you put a label on yourself that this is it's an indefinite label and that there's no end to it very 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 difficult to overcome or to make improvements until you change that label Okay, so if you do find yourself associating with some of these labels, it's important to try change it because that fixed mindset is is dangerous in some situations. Uh, and I suppose not dangerous specifically, but it is like if you really want to make improvements and you really want to make change in your life and your lifestyle, you have to get it, move on from the fixed mindset to more of a growth mindset. Things that things can change and that they can improve. Uh, and why, I guess to move on from that then why are they an issue and i think what i've discussed there labels are very dangerous for the body and for our mind if we label ourselves as something we have to abide by the rules or the power parameters of that label okay and if we find ourselves falling outside of that our body will kick back or we won't be true to ourselves so often we'll even though we don't agree with some parts of the label we'll still fit into that part of the label and I think an interesting one to go outside of this is the conservative versus liberal argument in politics, that there's a lot of liberals that also have some conservative values, and there's a lot of conservatives that have some liberal values, but they, because of what they've labeled themselves or what other people label, like I just labeled them there, it's difficult to come to terms with that because you have to fall into place with all the values of what your label is, okay, what your group is. So if you're conservative, you have to follow everything that's conservative. If you're liberal, it's everything that's liberal. Okay? And the same goes back to the body, is if you feel that you are chronic pain patient, well then, if you are are not willing to change that mindset, or not willing to try to evolve, I guess, or improve that, you'll find that you'll always fit in the parameters of a chronic pain patient. Um, And it, it could be that you are somebody who had pain before or had serious pain or who had chronic pain before and it could be that you're moving out of that and that you're evolving into somebody who used to have it and now you are you have a new identity of this is what I want to live my life as I'm someone who can do whatever I want because 
once you identify in a certain way, you no longer feel at times that there's another way you can change or there's another way to change because that's what you identify as. And it can take a long time and there's always an improvement that can be made. The Another label, I guess, that's dangerous is that idea of a bad back. I have a bad back. My family had bad backs before me. And like rarely is that the case, that a bad back probably means that your back isn't strong enough if we're looking at it on a basic level. Um, now, somebody in your back or somebody in your family had back pain before, then there's this idea of learned behaviors that you could have picked up off them, different behaviors. Uh, you may be more prone to it genetically, but that's only a very, very small part to it. There's a lot more involved in it, and the environment is huge. And if you're associating yourself, if you're looking at yourself and saying that you have a bad back, and to be honest, I have seen this, you wouldn't believe the age groups of people that, who start to complain of a bad back. I've seen 14-year-old boys complaining that they have a bad back and their father has a bad back. Now, they that if a 14-year-old child is, I guess, identifying as somebody who has a bad back at 14 years old, which is crazy, when they are 20 years old or when they're 23 or 4 years old, do you reckon that they will still be playing sport? Do you think that they're still going to be in the gym? Do you think they're still going to be exercising? What type of lifestyle follows that? Okay, the, this is the danger of it, is that if you identify as that early, you will fall into place with the lifestyle that's associated with that. And a lot of the time, that's if you have a bad back at that age, the, a lot of the time the lifestyle that goes with that is somebody who doesn't exercise well, who doesn't eat cleanly, who doesn't sleep well. Okay, so do you want to just identify something like that and start to live the rest of that life out? Or do you want to try and improve and always look to improve? Like you do, I'm sure, in a lot of different situations. So there's always an improvement that can be made. But if you aren't aware and you aren't actively working on this mindset, it's difficult to make those changes. Fragile mindset as well is one that I come up on quite a bit. Okay, and... What I mean by that is that the thinking that the body is fragile and thinking that they can't do certain things because it's going to damage them uh, and, and thinking that you aren't able to do certain exercises or certain movements because of the fact that it's going to be dangerous for your body. This in turn is going to reduce what you feel you're actually able to do and you're going to set your own self-imposed limits on yourself of where you can get to and what you can achieve. And you'll be the person then that will sit back and look and talk about what you could have done, but only this. If I could have, I could have run a marathon, only my knee was, I had a bad knee. Do you know, I could have climbed that mountain, except my hip was at me. And these are, are, are things that you will see so often. Uh, like you'll see it every day with people you talk to, is this mind or mindset of their body is fragile, they need to protect it. And what can happen then is you can get this catastrophization where you notice that things are starting to get worse and then because they start to get, let's say you get a bit of pain or a bit of soreness, now you are, it, it goes from a small bit to maximum pain, maximum soreness, 9 out of 10 pain, 10 out of 10 pain. Uh, when really it's that you're really assessing that you're a bit, you're really anxious about it and a lot of the time it's it's so easy to bring a a what would be counted as a 4 out of 10 pain to a 9 or 10 out of 10 pain. It's easy to do that. Um, you just have to really think about it as much as you want, like really focus on how bad it can be, all the possibilities of how bad it could be and what it could be. Um, and sooner or later, it's going to get severe. Uh, and it's really important to watch that you aren't falling into that habit. Then with this other fragile mindset, what you'll often see is they're very reliant on others to fix them. So a lot of the time, these are people... You'll find that you need to be adjusted a couple of times a year to get your body back in line because it's all out of line. This is a really that's a common one that I see. Uh, you'll be reliant on I have to meet or I have to get a massage twice a month to get everything fixed. And they can't do what they love or what they really enjoy doing because it could make it worse. There's a fear there that they can make it a lot worse than it is right now. And that's a big one. So those two are huge and the reason i want to bring them up is because they're so common and i like 
I think everyone is everyone here, everyone listening to this, including myself, is guilty of having these mindsets or labeling or having this fragile virginity mindset at times. Um, and I think the reason I want to bring it up is because if you can become aware of it and aware of when it creeps in, you can start to work on it and you can start to improve it. And uh, it's something that I think we should all look to improve. I'm putting out or I put out a newsletter on resilience um, and optimism uh, over the last couple of weeks. And I think that, and if anyone wants to join my newsletter, go on to my Instagram page and join it. And I go into a good bit of detail on each of those mindsets and how they have such an, uh, an impact. But on top of that, I think you need to look at what the solution is. Okay, and when you're looking at changing mindset, when you're looking at changing thought patterns, I think it it all boils back to the identity that you have, and that's why I really find labels are such a dangerous thing to be get caught up in, because if you're caught in labels, you are, it's difficult to, as I said, work outside of that. So what is the solution to this, and how do I test it in rehab situations, or how do I test it when I'm working with clients? Uh, as well as how do I try work on it myself in different ways well I think first off you do need to push people to what they feel their limits are because generally a lot of the time if you have this mindset your limits are in and around 30% 40% of what you can actually do uh, and you'll set limits on yourself way earlier than you actually should and I think it's uh, it's sad to see because you'll always be underachieving what you can actually achieve but I think that's why it's good to get a coach and get someone who understands this because then they can push you and you like you have someone to answer to. Why didn't you run the, the 12K when we kind of had it planned out? Well, I've noticed here at the 8K or 9K mark that I just couldn't keep going. I didn't want to keep going. And then, okay, grand, I completely understand that. It happens to me all the time. Let's look at maybe journaling or let's look at having different strategies when that comes into play, how we work against that. And how we how we can overcome that barrier and that mindset and that's huge if we can do that you can see a big 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 improvement in people week in week out now it's not going to be a one week change this idea of identity evolution takes time because you're trying to change what somebody thinks about themselves for years a lot of the time before this now the other thing is that if you have a family member okay or a friend and i actually had this a uh, deep conversation with a guy recently about this uh, and about his mother who was really struggling with with a lot of issues a lot of pain issues um really struggling with, with a lot of things going on uh, emotionally and physically and he was asking me to to chat with her and i was saying no problem at all i'll have I, i'll chat with her for as long as you want or as long as she wants um but i really don't feel that i was the best person to chat to her okay and i said to him he was like oh well, do you refer anyone on or whatever and i said most likely at this point in time uh it's it's he was he was the man that i wanted to chat with her and he was the guy who said if you need to sit down and you need to talk to her because they were fighting over something there was a lot of conflict at the time as well and i was like if you put that onto me i can look at the physical but in one session it's going to be very difficult to bring up all these other things so basically i said to your man once it's like once everything was cleared and she was okay and there was the 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 physical issues were actually cleared i said i want you to go i want to sit down with them and I want you just to listen to them okay really listen to somebody when you listen to somebody and don't interrupt it's surprising what comes out uh, and I think that we are all guilty of it of trying to give advice too soon and it's something that I'm really practicing now is just to sit in silence even when things go quiet and to sit there in silence and to not offer any advice for a while and to just just be empathetic and and care for the person and i say because i'm always on calls with clients uh, and and the clientele that i work with i really love the clientele that i work with it's it's a, a really tough group of people who are trying to overcome certain issues certain injuries and get the bigger things and i genuinely care about all of them every one of them and in certain situations that different issues have arose or popped up uh, and I've had to say, okay, there's no problem. We'll, we'll figure it out another time. Let's just continue on the road we're going and let's let's clear up, uh, make sure that you're, you're moving in the right direction. And when you sit down and when you listen to someone and you sit back, you can at times 
get them to test their own mindset and at times they will figure out their own thing without any advice given but having i don't want to use the analogy of having a shoulder to cry on because I, it is fitting but in a lot of situations it's it's just having someone to bounce ideas off of and having someone to listen to you uh, so that you can you can kind of hear yourself better and hear how you you are talking to yourself i think a lot of the time that helps massively because you can start to figure your own things out and then maybe i say or i would recommend okay well i I like what's going on there let's look at this week instead of getting an extra running session in i want you to go down and i want you to sit by the the river for 15 or 20 minutes and i want you just to relax chill out and have no one with you and just if you want to listen to music if not no problem sit there in silence or it could be that we introduce meditation or it could be that we introduce some form of journaling whatever it is but the only way you'll get to that that level of, of understanding with people I think a lot of the time is by sitting and listening to them and and really being empathetic and figuring out what is the actual issue okay because with long-term injuries and with issues like that that have been going on a long time like let's say back pain knee pain hip pain shoulder pain there is the physical side to it but there's also a huge emotional side to it as well and there's certain elements of different thought patterns and mindset or, or mental models that are affecting them and affecting how well they can improve or, and the degree that they can improve. So you do have to push people to what they feel their limits are. You do have to be empathetic with people. Um, and then I think you have to become aware of what's holding them back and you have to become aware of what's holding you back So and how you can improve it. It could be that, and I find for me, journaling is a great way of, of writing down, okay, I understand that this mindset keeps popping up, this top and keeps popping up. Um, and then I'll delve in on it a small bit more. And I'll after I've kind of really figured out where it's coming from, what it's coming up from, her, figured out to the level that I can, then I'll start to make an action plan of how to improve it and how to counteract it and how to overcome it or evolve. I was actually having a, a really interesting conversation with a client a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago now at this stage. And I was talking about we need to change. We need to change this identity. We need to change this. We need to change that. Uh, and I was digging in on like what we need to change. And... Uh, it was actually a bit of an eye-opening experience for me because she was like to me that's part like like agreeing everything like we need to do all this she's like but i don't want to change anything she's like because if i have to change that changes who i am she said i want to evolve i want to become a better person but i don't want to change and for me that was really eye-opening it was like we need this identity evolution where you're evolving you learn from your mistakes you've learned from things in the past we're not changing and since that I've started to really implement that. That's a, it's a good few months ago now that we did that nearly a year, I think. I started to implement that a small bit more in my in my in my coaching and I've noticed that it makes a huge difference because it's not you're not resisting, you're not fighting against something as much then. You're evolving out of it. And when you have that done and when you've kind of overcome that issue or when you've started to notice improvements I think it's extremely important to reflect back on the achievements that you've made and reflect back on the small things of the fact that, let's say, three months ago, you didn't want to go into a cold shower, but now you're able to get into a cold shower, okay, and comfortably. You weren't able to sit in the sauna for 10 minutes, five minutes, but now you're able to get in there for 15, 20 minutes. You didn't want to go for a swim in the sea, but now you're doing it. You didn't want to get up at six o'clock in the morning but now you're getting up at six o'clock every morning and you're doing your sessions. It could be that you didn't want to be read a bill or you wanted to read build a reading habit, but you never got into it. Now you're doing it for 15 minutes a day. Reflecting on that makes you more aware of it, which feeds back. You get this positive feedback loop of, okay, well, I actually am doing well. I, I've been disciplined. I've been working on the right things and I've been seeing an improvement on everything that I do. And then you'll notice that things will compound and you will start to improve leaps and bounds going forward after that and it's really really interesting how much of an effect it does actually have on you when you do get those things in place so i think actually taking the time to reflect on what you've worked on i think we can do it now i think it's a perfect time right now to do it if you're sitting in the car listening to us if you're on the bus if you're walking whatever you're doing at the moment i think it's important to look back at the last six months to a year and how have you evolved how have you overcome obstacles? What have you done better 
than what you used to do? What have you changed what you said you would change and you stuck to it? Okay, what habits have you built? I don't want you to think about all the things that you didn't do. Okay, because they are things that are in the process of evolution. They're things that are improving over time. But I really want you to reflect on all the things that have gone right and all the things that you've done right over the last six months to a year. And if you do that, you'd be surprised how much of an effect that can have on your mindset, how much of an effect it can have on your body and your confidence, as well as how much of an effect it can have on your life. If more of us did it more often, you'd be really, really, really surprised how much of an improvement people would make in such a short time. But that's everything, guys, I wanted to talk about today. Um, I wanted to discuss testing, I guess, testing a mindset in rehab. Or, or I wanted to discuss how mindsets can have an effect on people and why they do need to be changed or improved or evolved. Uh, and what I talked about a lot was why top patterns or what top parents have I noticed and a lot of it is like body's broken tried everything and nothing's work uh, identifying as chronic pain uh, nobody understanding them having a fixed mindset and setting labels on yourself then I discussed why they're an issue labels are dangerous to the body how like having if you identify as having a bad back or chronic pain I talked about that 14 year old how that can have an effect in each stage of your life as you go along and then how as you look, once you identify something you feel that that's it, it's fixed and there's no longer a way to change. We always need to look at that growth mindset and how we can grow and how we can improve because that's what we're doing all of the time. And I think the other one was the fragility mindset. Fragility, I don't know if that sounds right, but that mindset of being fragile, how the body's fragile, how it breaks easily, how if anything happens, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen, that catastrophization. And then how that make you reliant on others as well as what you can feel what you feel you can do yourself you'll really limit that i talked about the solutions that have worked for me and for for my clients is that pushing people to what their limits are coach as i said is really really good to get some get you to do that because sometimes you will underperform uh what your limits are and then you've no one to be accountable to and you've no one to push you on and no one to test you of what you think of where you can get to then as i was saying if you know somebody who's struggling uh, and they need, obviously, professional help, then put them on to someone who's struggling, put them on professional. But a lot of the times, just being empathetic, caring about someone's well-being, sitting down, listening to them, listening to why they feel they have their body is broken, why they feel their body is, is, is fragile, uh, why they're fixed in their mindset, and just caring and just sitting there and, and taking it all in, listening, not interrupting, not offering advice. A lot of the time, people will come to their own conclusion and they'll, they'll find that there is ways that they can change it. And they'll figure out as they talk more the mindset that's driving the way that they are talking. And that's, if that's really, really powerful. If you can get somebody, and it's really not you that's in it, they're doing it for themselves, you're just directing it. Somebody to figure out what's holding them back specifically themselves as they're talking, that's powerful. And then all you need to do then is add, or I guess introduce different ways of how they could keep that long term how they can improve on it long term then you have to become aware of what's holding you back to improve and you have to reflect on the achievements that you have and that's what i'm saying i want everyone to take just a couple of minutes to reflect on the achievements that you've had over the last year so i will leave it at that for now while you reflect on your achievements uh, as always i would really 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 appreciate if you could share this on your story uh, or send it to a friend it helps massively with promoting the podcast and getting the name out there that bit more uh, and there's always going to be someone who is struggling with this and they need help with it and they may not know where to look right now also if you have any questions please reach out send me a message on instagram at mobility tutor or send me an email at the mobile or mobility tutor at gmail.com but that's everything for me today guys i look forward to hearing what you improved on i look forward to hearing on what you reflected on your achievements and i will leave it at that so have a good one